My name is CJ. I'd like to show you a little bit about uh, Git config, which um, the, the main reason for this particular talk is every time I go to a new machine or a new, uh, when I'm doing pair programming with a new colleague, especially a new engineer fresh out of school, usually Git is not being taught in school, and you will start off with a brand new installation of Git with no configuration at all. And without configuration, it's pretty hard to get anything uh, moving forward. Like, you get no colors, and you do not have the shortcuts commands which I have built over the years to, to get it working. So I'm going to go through very uh, step by step, like some of the, the, the key config that should be ideally default in most uh, most places, except you know, it's not really always the case. There are a few ways of doing this. Uh, of course, you can always have your doc, create your own doc file uh, repository, which you can contain all your various development environment uh, configuration. So, git config can be one of the the, the doc file stuff you store in your doc file directory. Here, who here already maintain a kick ass? Dot file directory. Come on, people, you have to do, use dot files. Sorry? Can you tell us a bit more about what dot files are and why they're useful? Okay, let's do that. Google dot files. So GitHub has a created a repository called uh, dot files dot It shares a few uh, favorites. And they are mostly bash and the SH related. Uh, there are a few examples here. You can take a look at them. You can choose which one you like most. Usually the one at the top is more popular and hence they are at the top. There's only one uh, bash one. Over here, if you're old school and you want to use, you, you, want, you still want to use bash as opposed to set SH. Uh, Matthias Binance? Yes. Binance. Payments, thank you. Uh, it's the only one that has uh, batch dot files. Everybody else uses uh, ZSH. So dot files, you, I'll give you just open a few examples to show you. This is what dot files look like. It has dot batch profile, batch RC, editor config, um, git config, you know. Mercurial as well, screen RC. Who, use, who uses screen these days? No? Uh, I guess if you use bash, then you're the kind of person who uses screen. So it's not a bash, it's a default in OSX. It is? It's, it's, it's a matter of a hipster versus uh, old school, you know? <coughs> use both. Sorry? You use both screen and Gmax. You use both screen and TMAX? Cool. Uh, the reason you don't use screen these days is because screen is not in active development anymore. It's kind of the stagnant project that nobody does any bug fixes. It's not maintained anymore. That's why you shouldn't use it. Um, this one is a ZSH dot files. Um, they usually maintain it in um, a git directory. I can show you mine as well. Mine is different from those. And this dot file is actually very old. Um, about five years. It's the very first report that I created when I started using Git. Like first thing I want to do is I want to store all my git directory uh, sorry, all my dot files in a git directory somewhere. And this is what I know um, so most of my dot files are inside this directory. They're very tiny and small because I try to keep them uh, tidy, like doing regular spring cleaning, editing all your batch aliases and batch profiles and, and the stuff that shouldn't be polluting your, your, your batch environment. Now back to the, the Git topic. How did you do that Git summary thing? It says summary is not a command. 
That is a GitHub I've seen that before. Sorry? I've seen that syntax before, that report. Uh, there is a, a extension called Git Extras, and this is this is Git Extras. It has it's called it's out, it calls itself it awesome Git utilities. It has a whole bunch of tools that you can use. And I just scroll down very quickly. This was created by TJ Holloway at first. Um, it has grown like crazy over the past few years. Like, there's a, a lot of new commands that came out, which really you do not need. <laughs> but the, the point of this topic is not to cover the, the stuff you do not need. Uh, they are useful if you know what they do, but you really do not need them, most of them, except for the first one, PLIS. PLIS is pretty cool. Um, so summary is one of this command, and yeah. There are other tools, command line tools like pop, for example. Pop. Okay, I'll show you how. Uh, pop is a GitHub specific tool. It's a command line tool. It's, it extends uh, most of Git default functionalities. Um, but more, more, than, more importantly, it's meant to use, uh, it's meant to let you use uh, your command line tool to integrate with GitHub. It's very, very GitHub specific. You do not need it, but I find myself using it a lot because I like creating pull requests from my local. It's, there's a pull request command called uh, git pull request, and you can specify any one and uh, the title, the, the message, the description, and it will create a pull request for you. You don't even need to uh, go to the web browser. This is hipster puppy. <coughs> so let's go back to git config. So the very, very simple git config should really not contain too much stuff. Um, Obviously, you need to have your username and email. Uh, I do not know what this does, but I see a lot of people using it, so I'm just going to add it in first, and then I'll figure it out later. It, it looks like something related to GitHub, so I'm just going to drop that there first. Uh, call exclude files. Exclude files is where you, uh, you put your email. This, I have no idea why GitHub doesn't, sorry, why Git doesn't have this as default, you do not. You actually have to specify it clearly and do uh, an unsolved global. Uh, this is just a convention. You don't have to do an unsolved global. Uh, so you are encouraged to use the global Git in all instead of storing all your project specifics into the Git repository and or adding them into your uh, individual repository. NLI, line key, auto zero, LF, false. You only need this if you are using Windows. Otherwise, you don't really need them. Anybody using Windows here? Wow, you guys are cool. <coughs> so, right here, color. If you can take this down, copy this, copy this everywhere. In fact, you should actually add this into the ETC git config in, in the system wide git config because seriously, who uses a terminal that doesn't support color these days? <coughs> you do? Wow, thanks so much. Okay. <laughs> Push default. Uh, since git version 1.8, I think. Was it 1.8? So, like 2.0. 2.00, you start seeing this warning that says, uh, do you want to use the old method of pushing, or do you want to use the new method of pushing? The difference between the old method of pushing and the new method of pushing was that with the old method, they call it matching. The way matching works is it takes all your local branches, and it finds all the remote, uh, the remote branches, and for everyone that the names matches, it 
pushes everything from your local to your home. This may not be ideal uh, if you are a beginner. And especially if you are like me, you like to work on one branch, switch another branch, work on another, some other feature, but uh, work on some features, then decide that you want to push your current branch code instead of pushing everything else. So uh, I would recommend using always a simple one, which is why they introduced 2.00. The old school, for Git users that have been using Git since version 1.4 on, onwards, they have gotten used to the matching style. So you tend to find people putting in matching here instead of simple. Uh, if you're new to Git, always use simple, stay simple, and <coughs> it will make your life a lot easier. What, what does it actually change? What, what's the difference between the matching and simple? Simple only push your current branch. Matching push all your local branches. You do not want to push all your local branches most of the time, especially if you are still working on some uh, some code bases. And it also depends on what is your habit. If you have a habit of commit push commit push, or you have a habit of commit 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 push. Does anyone understand what that means? Okay, awesome. Um, bash upstream verbose. This is a uh, built-in functionality. It's uh, we don't see this most of the time uh, in most environment. So depending on how you set up your your prompt, your bash prompt, ZSH has something similar as well. I think it's also called bash prompt. Uh, in your bash prompt, if you put a command like this, can anyone see this? This is prompt one, and I've had this. Uh, I think this is the one. Okay, so this is my my bash prompt. It's relatively complicated because it has colors in it. You don't really need it. Uh, you can find it somewhere inside here. There is a, a, a subshell that opens uh, the open subshell and calls git ps1. With this one, you can uh, it will show this section here, this master thing. With yeah, this must so. This basically allows, this shows you what state you are in in your current Git registry. Currently, I have a branch called master, uh, and this symbol means that I have untracked files. If I add a, a file, you start seeing a plus, and that plus means that there is a, there's a file that's being staged. So when you run git status, you see that the file is saved. Once I commit it, show commit, you it will disappear again. Um, if I make changes to the dot git config, it will show a star, which means that the directory is coming to the So this is the the verbose part of it. Um, you do not need it, but there's no harm putting it in. And if you do use the git default uh, platform, verbose harm. Be careful when you're using this as well. Um, the underscore underscore git underscore ps1 takes up quite a lot of resources. Uh, so if you are, if you notice, there is a lot of delay uh, between the each time it's being executed, it's relatively slow. If I turn it off, um, I should remember what's going on. So just me. Yeah. 
So this basically turns off the the verboseness and the response time become, get, gets improved. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Uh, diff, no prefix. Uh, have you ever run git diff and then you want to find copy the file? So this will print uh, the, the patch. And if you do not have the prefix enabled, get something like this um, with a prefix a slash config b slash config uh, it's relatively annoying because I have a a way to just double click on the file and then I can copy that and use it somewhere else whenever I need to, to use it so I tend to not like not to not have that slash a the other thing that uh, concerns me is because with this same hash if you generate and you push it to a file you can actually reapply using the, the patch command line. So like patch dash g0. So if I were to paste it like this, it's pretty annoying, so I have to like scroll all the way back, give it a slash a and continue. Okay. Um, Sub module. Mm. Do I have an example? <laughs> What's my last report? So I have sub module this report, and when I run a git diff, it will show me the log differences. So there is a sub module called the SDK and it will show me the, the, the log history. If I don't have that turn on, it will, it will not show you this. Next one, grab line number goes true. This basically prints a line number when you run a grab. Uh, so git has a command called git grab. It search your local directory for, uh, it search all the index files in your local directory. And it's supposed to be faster than Silverlight. Sil sorry, Silver Surfer, Act, and AG. Does anyone use any of these tools? Okay. Which one do you use? AG. AG. Yeah, yeah Grab is faster than AG. Apparently. AG is faster than Act. Yeah. Act is faster than Grab. Yeah. Grab is faster than all of them. The only reason is because git grab is indexed. Uh, it search the git internal index. So if I want to find something like the prefix, what we were looking at just now. Oops. Home directory. It will, sh it will show you uh, the config, line number, and You might want to alias it to something nicer. Um, so you have something like something that is more readable. And grab supports all most of the grabs uh, options. So you can do contacts, for example. And if you do C3, uh, it will show you three lines before and three lines after. For example. So this is useful for debugging and. Searching stuff. 
Um, yeah. So if you set a line number true here, it always shows up. Merge log true. I forgot what this does. <laughs> um, OK, I remember. So when you do a merge, uh, Git will ask you to enter a commit message. Right? If you have this option on, it will automatically look through the both branches and their history and automatically populate your commit message with the, the long messages. So this is this is very useful. So um, let me see if I can find an example. Let's say in underscore, I want to. Okay, there's too many branches. Branch of two async. Check out async. Sorry. There's a branch called async, which is not branched. Yet. Okay, so. Right now, uh, here it shows me u minus 11. Means that I am 11 commits behind upstream. Upstream refers to origin slash master. Uh, this depends on how you set up the branch to track. Usually it's. <laughs> I need to know how to turn that off. Um, git merge async. <laughs> what is this? What's your email address? Okay. Async. So I don't have async branch checked out, so. Okay, I really have no idea how to turn this off. Uh, can you like, Valentine, can you like tell Bob to stop? Yeah, that, that works, right? Okay, yay! Okay, uh, I do not have the async branch for so I need to do, a, I need to prefix it with the, the remote. And when I do this, it says conflict. Awesome. This is like freaking awesome. Anyway, the, the message is constructed. You can find it in. Uh, what is it called? I think you can just do get out of Okay, here we go. So this is the, the message that it constructs. Let me try and see if I can scroll. Show you the whole thing. Um, yeah, this is a message constructs. Uh, it has all the well, some of it of the logs up to the six, and then there's not the one. Uh, it also shows you the conflicts. Now, uh, if you're familiar with how coming messages work, anything prefixed with uh, that, that starts with a hash will be not. So you can choose to keep this, or you can choose not to. So it shows you the, the log history of both branches, depending on which one is the, the one that you're trying to merge in. So if I do add all as you suggested, just basically committing everything that's broken. Uh, by the way, did you notice this? First complaint, but it shows me uh, what I'm trying to do right now. And it just shows me that I'm still level commits behind, it also shows me that I have some stage files. This is pretty awesome. <coughs> so default git uh, functionality, you just need to add it into your, your bash form. Git status. So I have the files here, they're all conflicted. And I do a git commit. Uh, when I do a merge and I resolve conflict, I do not need to specify the dash n messages because you just want to automatically read it from the merge underscore message, the one that showed you this now. So there you go, it comes up. So this is what it looks like. Um, does anybody read this? This section here, does anybody read it ever? 
Wow, awesome. This is like design fail, UI fail. <clears throat> okay, so um, I'm gonna save this and I'll just show you this is the kit. So the merge lock equals true is the one that sets this. Now come down to aliases. Okay, aliases are tricky because everybody have their own preferences, everybody prefers to use different commands and short form for what they prefer. Uh, here, this list here is by no means uh, any recommendation or uh, in, in any way because the yeah, like, short form is really hard to like, decide what actually makes sense. Some people prefer CO to be commit instead of checkout. Uh, CP is relatively um, misleading because it can, mean, it can mean copy as well. How do you do a, when you want to give CP? Does it mean charity or does it mean copy? Although, you know, you can interpret it easily. Uh, what you definitely should have for sure is uh, LG, uh, a short form for a log graph online and free. Every time I go to a new, new machine, every time I need to look at the git history, that's the first thing I type on. Like log dash dash graph dash dash log dash dash memory dash dash color equals auto. Just to see like a beautiful git history. Just, um, I think everyone should just have this as default. And then maybe a dash dash purples for the default git logs. So my, my git log is still this, the original ones. Uh, the long and with the long hashes and all, all this stuff that we mostly do not care about, as opposed to git log, like this, like the beautiful, beautiful history. The underscore is not helping very much here. Uh, so you can see, <coughs> you can see like which pull requests, uh, who is the person that committed, uh, how long ago, like four weeks ago. And short hashes, and you can follow the, the commit history line to see what's going on. And yeah, that's it. Um, so I have three more. Rebase. This is my favorite. This is this is brand new, by the way. Uh, Auto stash came out in two point two. Auto squash. This came out in version 2.2 and above. I don't know which version. If you can do a quick search on Git, on GitHub to find out when this is introduced on your mobile phone, that would be great. Otherwise, I, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so, on the stash true, basically what it does is if you have, have a habit of rebasing, you do, and especially if you're working on a feature branch, you're hacking away your code and then realize that the colleague tell you, hey, I just pushed a commit, can you go and rebase it? Then you're like, ah, yeah, okay, I'll go rebase it. The, the general habit is you run git stash, then you run git rebase, and then you run git stash home. Auto stash just does it for you. So when you run git rebase, it automatically gives it for you. You can also use auto stash as, uh, as an option. Uh, so for example, git rebase the dash, dash dash auto stash. So this will work as well. The same applies to auto squash. You can also do git rebase dash dash auto squash. Now auto squash is um, what you use if you are using if you use fixup. Has anyone used fixup before? Hey, one percent. Does anyone want to know what fixup does? Or is this too advanced? Rebase sounds pretty advanced stuff. It's rewriting history. Some people are not comfortable doing it, like what Deepak said. Um, we work in the same company, but I have completely different philosophy when it comes to rebase. rebase. <coughs> uh, Seth will show you the difference between uh, before you did the rebase and after you did the rebase. So that's useful when I'm going to give you an example just by taking this same underscore uh, 
Redbook. Uh, wait, reset. Uh, origin master. So I'm restarting my head to uh, master. If you notice here, it says here u equals. U equals means that I am on par with origin master. My master is the same here as origin master. I can prove to you by running git log. And if you see that my head is pointing to master, origin master is in the same location and origin here is the same location. Okay. Now, we try to check out async. Um, if you notice here, Git automatically set up uh, async the local, uh, create a new branch and it set it up to track the remote branch async origin. So, and then it switched me to async. Because I don't have a branch there uh, in my local. Now, I want to merge, no, sorry, I want to rebase against master. Uh, who here bats this? There's going to be complaint. Uh, apart from you. Okay, we're going to have conflict for sure. Uh, because usually a merge will resolve the conflict automatically for you. A rebase will not do anything for you at all. It will just. It will just be over. <laughs> so, rebase master. So my first conflict. Okay, uh, again, if there's one showing me some stuff here, I'm trying to uh, the directory, some stage files, and it tells me I'm trying to append a rebase. It also tells me that I have 26 images to go and I, I my conflict happened at the first one. I'm gonna be lazy and I'm just gonna add everything and continue. Rebase Continue. Again. I'm just going to chip my way away. Okay, it's done. No, it's not done yet. One more commit to go. And done. Okay, it didn't show me the diff. Uh, I think this should, should do the job. Yes, okay. This is where the step is. When you run the rebase against the master, and it will show you the data between. And three commits to go to now. And it also tells you that it's doing a fast forward. So this is the step that it prints out. Um, okay, cool. That's about it. The rest here is just convenient functions that uh, you can choose to set your local. I mean, if you want to do a clone of a particular report, you just do git clone, git hub, clone. Followed by username slash record. This will just completely resolve it for you. Okay. Um, any questions? Okay, I needed to add, cover one more thing. Uh, where to find your git config? Each system will have multiple git config files, and depending on where it's set, it affects slightly different things. Um, so there is a system-wide configuration file. Then there is a second user configuration file, which is usually, I think it's Windows-based. I've never actually seen some report, but uh, it's a it's a convention. What's, what's XDG? Does anyone know what's XDG? It's something to do with the X Windows system. So if you notice here, it's storing it in a dot config. Slash config. 
The dot config con uh, convention is not, I'm not very familiar with it. I don't see many system uses of dot uh, And then there is your own, so tilde means home directory, and git config means your own custom global. Anything that you saw in the global command, you will install that. And the last one is repos C3 specific configuration file. So this is for each custom repository. You can also you can you can find them in uh, in the Git directory. This is where I install stuff like which is the remote branches packing and uh, what other remote uh, what are the URL for the remotes. Uh, give you another clue. I use git config sometimes to store uh, environment variables. Not recommended, but you can do that. Okay, um, that's about it. I will push this out to GitHub, and you guys can copy, I guess. Uh, you can find the git ignore as well. Uh, I'll be pushing it. In. I copy this from some. Thank you. Okay, we have one more exercise, which is for.